Hi guys, bringing you a video today on this, a 1918 dated officer's service dress jacket. Uh, slightly different format, as you can see. Me talking to the camera and I have the uniform on a mannequin. Uh, I can use this obviously in the future for looking at web equipment and things like this as well. Uh, if you like the new format, let me know in the comments. Uh, I'd be pleased to know your feedback on that, uh, as opposed to doing everything flat on the grey blanket. Uh, if you like this, I'll try and continue doing videos of this manner going forward. I thought it's a better quality way of doing things, better way of presenting things, but we'll see what people think. To talk about this, uh, it's to a lieutenant of a territorial unit of the Royal Artillery. As I've already said, it's dated 1918, and it's very much a good, it's a very good example of a late war British officers working service dress jacket. Obviously, service dress was worn in the field. Um, this uniform is going to get mucky much as it's tailored and has all these nice details like the scallop pockets and things. This is a working uniform. Some officers in the front line would wear the other ranks jacket and things, particularly in mucky trades. You see quite a lot of Royal Engineers officers wearing um, if they were involved in tunnelling and things like this. Uh, and also just front line, it was not uncommon to see men, officers wearing uh, the other ranks jacket uh, to make them less easy to distinguish. That also is the reason for the design of this jacket insofar as the way the ranks worn. It's worn on the shoulder. Now everyone, it's very famous of course, the British Army at the start of the war, everyone was wearing their rank on the cuffs with some exceptions. Anyone above the rank of Colonel didn't, he wore it on the shoulder, so General Ranks, Brigadier General on and up wore the rank on the shoulder. And some regiments, obviously notably the Guards, who like to do things differently, uh, were wearing their rank on the shoulder, all, all officer ranks in the, in the guards wore their rank on the shoulder, uh, as well as their different button spacing and all the other little bits of detail added on to guards, officer service dress, which is a topic for another video. Um, but if you'd been in a Royal Artillery at the start of the war, you would have worn your rank on the cuff, and it would have been on a, a scallop piece of cloth, so with similar shape to this, but moved down a bit bigger on the cuff. Uh, and then you would have had your pips and crowns on that piece of cloth and it would have been outlined in lace, the same chevron lace as used to make uh, other ranks, uh, to make uh, NCOs, um, chevrons or stripes. And you'd also have had bands around the cuff. Scottish officers, slightly different. Scottish officers had a cutaway jacket and they wore the rank slightly differently on the cuffs. You'd have the curved pieces and then the, the rank worn across the cuff. Slightly different, but again, that's a topic for another video really. It was not uncommon, I and mean, this I know this is the 1917 pattern, which I believe is when this was officially recognised, the wearing of rank on the shoulder for those, uh, those who weren't already covered by the exceptions I said before. Um, th this started as an unofficial adaptation in the field of officer service dress. They would move the pips or have a jacket commissioned to have a jacket tailored with the rank on the shoulder, often with the cloth pips moved up there. Uh, in fact, a friend of mine has a photograph of a jacket, a, a chap wearing a jacket where it has still has this piece of cloth. Imagine the pocket flap sewn on, so you'd have this scalloped piece of cloth, but all the lace has been removed off it and the pips. So you just you can just make out in the photograph the shadow of this. So he's obviously had it as a cuff rank, and the rank's been moved up onto the shoulder. These were derisively known as wind-up jackets, or, or I certainly that's the, the, my common understanding is that that was a derisive name used for them. You've got the wind-up, you're no longer showing your rank as boldly as it was on the cuff and it was very easy for marksmen to spot because it was on the front of the cuff and marching along easily seen. It's actually, despite these being gilt pips, and imagine they were embroidered, it would be even hard to see, it's actually a lot less conspicuous up on the shoulder. And this was the reason for the change in the first place. So uh, this is, as, a, as I say, to my understanding is a 1917 pattern officer service dress jacket. Whether that's an official designation, I'm not entirely sure, but it's certainly 1917 was when this was officially recognized and this is made to that pattern. Obviously has the, the uh, detailing on the cuff here. Uh, obviously quite crudely done, but it is interestingly an off the peg. It's not tailor made, it's an off the peg size, which we'll look at a little bit later when we look at the other side of the inside of this. Uh, to look at the externals, and then we'll look at the, the details of the rank and the buttons and so forth. Little watch pocket here on the waistband, which would normally be covered by your belt, of course. The two uh, pleated pockets of the breast there, um, ideal for carrying notebooks and things like that. And they were, these jackets were really were used as pieces of burden in the field. You see the pockets crammed, certainly the lower pockets crammed with all sorts of things. And we have obviously the, the tailoring of these jackets is very much of the time, uh, even pre-war, the stand collar version of these was tailored in a similar manner, right down to the waist, tailored in, and then the, the skirts just come away, um, very, quite voluminous skirts on there. And likewise, the pockets are pretty voluminous on the skirt. If I just turn the mannequin slightly, uh, you can see here big bellows pockets, and I'll just unbutton this here. I say another example of it being a working jacket, you have 
the button, the external button there to close the flap, and then another button in here which, which allows you to, uh, you say you've got a bit of extra support there to stop it sagging as much um, at the front. And if I get my hand in here, you can see just how much you could fit in there, easily get a ball fist in there and you'd still be able to fill it, uh, still be able to fasten it up. Um, so you could carry plenty in these, and that was the intention. I say in period photographs, you do see um, that they, uh, the pockets are definitely being used to carry all manner of things. Um, turning back around again, there we are. So obviously I have it displayed here with a, a dark coloured shirt, a uh, dark green shirt, tie bar on there and a lighter coloured tie, which was quite common to see in photographs. Officers had a bit of leeway in what they could wear. Um, so you do see shirts all the way from this sort of dark colour right the way through to almost white, um, and not only ties, but hunting stocks and things were worn as well. So there's a bit of leeway there, which is which is always interesting in period photographs to have a look for. Um, if I turn this round now all the way, well, if you look at the detail on the back, you can see here the two belt hooks. I'll just turn that slightly sideways and pull the arm out of the way. The belt hook here, these are very strongly stitched in, so again, excellent for supporting your belt, your Sam Brown or possibly officer's web equipment uh, belt. Um, the tab for the uh, hang it up, sticking out the collar there, tuck that away. Um, let have a word with your officer's servant, sir. Uh, you can see here the vent uh, down the back, one single large vent down the middle there, um, in contrast to other rank service dress, which had two small vents in, in the, uh, in the, in the uh, skirts there, um, made of this lovely twill, which you'll be able to see when we have a look at it close up the insignia. So uh, I'll just turn this back around again, and then I'll bring the camera in, so we can have a look at the close up look at the uh, insignia that's being worn here. And this is, as it came to me, I think I had to replace one T uh, one of the tees which shows territorial service, but other than that the insignia is original to the the jacket. So I'll just bring the camera in now and we can have a look. So bringing the camera in here we can see the there's a little bit of corrosion on these so I might have to do some cleaning up at some point. We can see here the the bursting bomb of the Royal Artillery on both collars uh, above a T. Now the T as I say, if I just turn this a little bit more into the light, there we go. The T represents territorial service and it's bronzed as is the collar badge. Um, and these bear the motto, the, the motto of the Royal Artillery, which is Ubique, uh, which is uh, Latin for everywhere. I'll bring that into focus. Sorry about that. The, fo the autofocus wasn't working very well. You can see that more clearly now. Um, Ubique, meaning everywhere, which was the, ro and the motto not only of the Royal Artillery, but the Royal Engineers. Uh, earlier in the war, the territorials were not permitted to wear the motto. Um, and you see bursting bombs both without the um, scroll beneath and with the scroll uh, containing, uh, instead of the word, uh, a spray, a laurel spray. And I have an example, um, I have an example of an officer's cap badge which shows that, so I will, I will show you that in just a second. So this is a reproduction cap fitted with a territorial Royal Artillery cap badge. And you can see the top part of the scroll there above the wheel that would normally contain the word ubiquay, but in this instance uh, has a spray of laurel. So you can see the gilt uh, rank pips here on the shoulder, um, obviously for the rank of lieutenant. If I bring the camera down, just turn the mannequin back round to the light again, you can see here on, on the front of the jacket, I just bring this in, hopefully bring this into focus here, if the camera will focus. Autofocus isn't working very well today, I don't know if it's something about the lighting. And you can see the Royal Artillery button there with the gun surmounted by the Imperial State Crown, which is obviously commonly referred to as the King Cra King's Crown, but Imperial State Crown's the official official name. Okay, so here I have the jacket turned inside out on the mannequin. We'll have a look at the interior of the front first. Um, you can see here another watch pocket, an internal watch pocket, otherwise there are no internal pockets in this. We have an internal watch pocket here with a little leather tab, which the leather is in, in incredible condition considering this is 100 years old this year. Um, amazing, really. Uh, but yeah, so a, a watch tab there so you can attach your pocket watch chain and keep your pocket watch in the internal pocket there. Uh, keeping to the front, let's say no, uh, you, oh, you do have one more pocket in fact, which is the dressing pocket of course, down in the skirts, just as it would be for other ranks. Um, that will take your first field dressing pocket, this is quite badly coming unstitched, I might do something about that at some point, not that I'm planning on wearing this, so might leave well alone. Um, the other detail of this, which is quite interesting, is that the collar can actually be worn up. Now the interior is lined with, obviously this is the, the inside face of the collar as you wear it, so that would be externals. Uh, is lined with uh, wool flannel. Uh, not quite sure why, just to save on wear and tear, perhaps. Um, to the uh, the twill fabric, the collar has this button and flap system here, so you can actually turn the collar up and button it across your neck. Um, now, my understanding is that this would be 
probably originally governed by the idea of the earlier uh, hypo uh, P and PH uh, helmet type respirators or hood type respirators, which had to be tucked in at the collar to be effective. Um, and this would allow you to do that with an officer service dress. Obviously, if you just had the V at the neck open, you, you tucking the, the respirator in would be uh, a lot more difficult. That said, of course, this is a 1918 jacket. So by that point, by this point in the war, the, the, even the PHG and the PH have long disappeared from service uh, over a year. Um, uh, certainly, I think it was late 1917 or mid-1917 mid that disappeared in favour of just carrying the SBR, the small box respirator, which of course didn't have the same issue. So it could just be for warmth. It could be just be that you could turn the jacket collar up and wear it that way for warmth. Uh, turning this round, you can see the interior lining, primarily made of khaki, uh, primarily a khaki uh, we uh, khaki colour. Um, the, the cuffs, the cuffs, the sleeves are lined in off-white. May have been white originally, certainly off-white now with age. Uh, the tailor's labour is at the top, and we'll bring the camera in a moment to have a closer look at that. Interestingly, this jacket, uh, and we'll have a look at the date label in a moment as well, is not a tailor-made item. It's an off-the-peg size, which is very unusual for officer service dress because certainly earlier in the war. It was tailor-made for the officer. This is a size three, five foot nine to five foot 10, and 38 in inch chest. It's a little short for me in the arms, but otherwise fits very well. I'm around 5'11", somewhere around there. So it's just a little bit short in the arms. I have quite gangly arms anyway as well. So that's, that's part of the problem, but otherwise fits me very well. Could have been made for me in fact, but it isn't. It's made to an off the peg size. Um, this is partly, this, in, this sort of example of late war, how things were changing, uh, the, there were a huge number of, of compar com certainly compared to earlier in the war and pre-war, a huge number of men coming up from the ranks uh, to, to obviously be granted commissions, to be promoted up through the officer ranks. And although you got uh, an officer's grant, a grant for uniform by this point, uh, certainly those coming from that sort of background because they couldn't necessarily afford to equip themselves as an officer might, uh, had you come from a more wealthy background, they were the grant didn't go as far as perhaps your own wealth might. So this is a cheaper option. And also with the wastage of uniforms, uh, it made sense even for more wealthy individuals to buy an off the peg cheaper uh, alternative as a working jacket um, than going and getting one tailor-made. Um, much as it has all the features of a tailor-made jacket, the scholar pockets and everything, it looks very nice. It's made to an off the peg size. And we have in the sleeve here, very unusually, and it's stamped upside down. So if I turn the sleeve up like this, you can, you can see, and we'll have a close up of this in a minute, 1918, a 1918 date stamp in the sleeve to show when it was manufactured. Um, it's possible this was in fact an issue officer service dress jacket. Do not quote me on this, but I have I understand, I can't remember who I heard this from, uh, that officers, certainly very, very late war, officers began to be issued uh, service dress. If you were promoted from the ranks, you would in fact be issued service officer service dress uniform for use in the field, uh, obviously in place of your other ranks service dress. Um, but I'm not entirely I can't remember where I read that and I can't cite the source. So uh, perhaps someone can clarify in the comments if they know, but it, I, that's one thing I've heard. Certainly earlier than that, um, before that started to happen, uh, men promoted from the ranks did receive a grant to help pay for um, their, uh, their uniform, their transfer to officer's uniform. So we'll bring the camera in now and have a look at the details of the interior. Okay, so here we have the label in the collar. As you can see, it's a little bit uh, faded, but it's a Simpsons and Son. And then the address, which I can't read. Uh, let's have a look there. South something street, South Audley Street, W1, so Westminster, uh, I believe that would be. And then size three, height five foot nine to 10, breast 38. So it is very much, I say it's pretty much my size, which is, which is good. I'll just turn the mannequin around slightly now so we can have a better look at the sleeve here. And in fact, I'll turn the camera to, to look at this. It's a bit easier. There we go. 19 flatten this out 1918 in the sleeve there as you can see bring this back round again just have a quick look turn it right round we'll just have a quick look at the closer look at the, the watch pocket here you can see the leather tab for the watch chain and then in here we have the the pocket uh, that again sits around the waistband or just above so um that is just a, a an overview a look at this this jacket uh, it's one of my favorite items in my collection um, purely, well, it's nice to have something of this age surviving in such good condition, uh, obviously 100 years old this year. So as I always say, I hope you found that interesting. As a, and as I said at the start of the video, uh, let me know in the comments if you like the new format. And uh, until next time, bye for now.